Hey everybody, Michael Snyder, Pacific Northwest Weather Watch. Today's July 15th, and today we're taking a look at the Langley Doppler radar along the Washington coast here. You can see it picking up some light precipitation along the Washington coast up towards Vancouver Island in southwest BC. This will not make much headway into the Puget Sound this afternoon and evening. We may see some high clouds from that, but that's about it. But this will bring a good marine push tomorrow that'll bank some low clouds all the way up the Cascades and may bring some drizzle in through the area of the Puget Sound, especially with a few light showers as well. So let's jump right into things here. Looking at the visible satellite imagery, you can see most of the area is getting some nice sunshine today. Saw some lenticular over Mount Rainier this morning that has since uh, dissipated, but it may come back again this afternoon. We'll just have to see. Uh, you can see that precipitation in the clouds here on the Washington coast up towards Vancouver Island there shown nicely. Some nice sunshine on the Oregon coast as well. But again, we're going to bank these low clouds up against the Cascades and probably in the Willamette Valley tomorrow morning with a nice marine push as we go through the early morning hours of tomorrow. But we'll probably break out for some sunshine through the afternoon. We'll take a look at that. A wider view of things here, you can see that upper level low here over the Gulf of Alaska, bringing that precipitation for us. You can see the monsoon moisture here still around the southwest area of the United States. It's been a very active monsoon season for them. And you can see this ex-hurricane Darby has now been stripped of its deep convection here. Wind shear really doing a number on that system out there. And you can see here, this is that... Uh, band of clouds this frontal system bringing that light precipitation today as you scroll through here you can kind of see as we move in through early morning hours here that marine push it's probably going to bring some low clouds all the way down through the Lamette valley even in puget sound but you can see we kind of break out as once we get into the afternoon hours here so we'll see some sunshine tomorrow just be patient with those low clouds and you may even be treated to some drizzle across the area or even a light rain shower as we go through the day tomorrow now checking this out, this 24-hour temperature high, as you can see, of course, cooler along the coast, up towards 80 for Seattle, mid-80s for Portland, warmer east, and some low 100s down into southeast Oregon and towards Boise there. So summertime pattern continues, even with this onshore flow, it can get pretty warm around here. And you can see the NAM is picking up this precipitation quite well, does not show that getting into the Puget Sound. Although you can see a little bit of light rain shower activity happening overnight and into tomorrow morning across the region. And it may not be picking up that drizzle. It usually doesn't here on these models. Now checking this out, this is an AM3KM high resolution. Look at temperature through today, mid 70s up towards 80 for Portland. Again, cooler along the coast and warmer inland. Sound like a broken record here for the last week or so. Um, taking a look at this, 500 millibars, 18,000 feet, European. There's that trough and system bringing that light precipitation. That swings through and eventually goes right over us here. And that may bring some light precipitation as we go through the day and afternoon, evening on Sunday here before that kicks out. And then some general troughing still nearby, very weak though, but it will keep an onshore flow going. And now the next weather maker here is going to move out of the Gulf of Alaska here. And how far away will this trough remain or will it kind of dive towards the Pacific Northwest a little more? Makes all the difference in the world. If the trough hangs out more, we can build ridging. If it drops down further, it'll keep a stronger onshore flow and cooler temperatures for the area. GFS has kind of been showing similar. There's the trough for Sunday into Monday. And then you can see the next one, Bering Sea over the Bering Sea in Alaska here, but it does not get as far as it did on the European here. So maybe we'll build some of this ridging up over us and through the extended here. Again, we'll just have to watch. We're getting pretty far out there. This is 300 hours out on the GFS. You got to take that with a grain of salt. Here goes Portland. You can see the cool down here. We go through Saturday, Sunday with a bounce back potentially through early and mid next week and then more seasonable temperatures again it's going to depend on trough location there and we'll continue to monitor that here's spokane you know glorious weather the eastern washington's not going to get much out of these systems um, if a trough sets up right you can always do thunderstorms out there but it doesn't look like anything imminent in their future out there for spokane seattle looks like they may stay some uh, pretty chilly here, especially on through Sunday. Might just be down into the 70s. It's relatively chilly. I mean, maybe a little bit below average. And then that bounce back maybe early to mid next week before we'll see what the next trough does after that. And we also had a new La Nina advisory out uh, 14th of July here. You can see they upped the chances a little bit here. 60% chance of July, September before going into a 62 to 66% chance for fall and early winter here so we'll see how that works out but the odds have been bumped up a little bit so the odds of a third la nina 
are increasing. Although you can see the models are kind of hinting at once we get towards January, neutral conditions become the favorite here. And then by February, actually this is February and here's March and you can see neutral conditions up over 55% chance of that. So we're still not sure what's going to happen here. This La Nina could hang on a little bit longer here, but I could see us easily moving back into neutral conditions once we get towards February and March. And you can see the odds of El Nino always there is starting to rise as we get away from this La Nina pattern potentially in through next spring. So like always, we'll continue to monitor these. These come out once a month and you get these weekly updates with the model runs here on sea surface temperatures. But we'll continue to monitor that with uh, potentially historic third La Nina in a row bearing down on us. But yeah, get out and enjoy the weather while you can. If you want to get out to the coast and enjoy some nice light rain and clouds, you know, Today is the day to do it. Tomorrow, not bad either. And we're going to bring a nice marine push in. So you're going to be some low clouds probably west of the Cascades all the way down through Oregon tomorrow. Drizzle potential even. Um, so yeah, if you want that early morning sunshine, get east of the Cascades tomorrow. So we'll do this again tomorrow. I will decide by then if I'm going to go storm chasing. Even if I do, I'll do some briefings from out there and we'll talk about anything coming here for Pacific Northwest. I'm starting to work on the Pacific Northwest all-time greatest wind storms. We're going to check those out in detail. We're going to look at atmospheric conditions that bring them and we'll look in detail at the great wind storms of our past and show you just what it takes to get those huge monsters in here. We're well overdue for a big, you know, one of those storms you can name. So maybe this will be the winter or fall coming up here. But that's yet to be seen. And I'll probably take my time doing that video. It'll probably be out in a month or two. I'll wait for the... I may even wait until on into October when we start getting a little more hype towards the fall uh, season. You know, it doesn't make much sense to put out winter stuff during the summer you know it, it, it's fun to kind of get hyped up about this stuff so i might wait until early fall when windstorm season finally arrives so yeah um click like and subscribe and we'll do this again tomorrow and i'll talk to you guys later